Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. Elio is joining me all the way from Toronto. Welcome. Hi, how's it going? I'm great, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So first off, I just want to congratulate you um, on an incredible six months. You dropped your debut single in March and then the EP in July, and now you just released your latest single, Jackie Onassis, on Friday. That is awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. So much happening for you. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been wild. Um, yeah, all of that and then a pandemic has been um, a big life change. <laughs> yeah, well, I even think like just even on top of the pandemic, you've been getting some great attention too, right out the gate for the music. Like, how does that feel <laughs> kind of like all wrapped together with what's going on? Um, yeah, it's it's really, I mean, my life even in January was completely different from my life the year before. So I feel like the past like two years have been just a roller coaster of of experiences <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. No, it's it's been it's been really nice, um, for the most part. The pandemic definitely has its ups and downs for me. Um but yeah, to have like to be able to release music and to like be able to um kind of still connect with people has been really kind of a, a saving grace in all of this. Awesome. So you've had a lot of music coming out. Like, were you always planning on doing it like this or, or how did this like kind of fall into place? Um, no, I, w I used to be in a band in high school. And so I was always doing like music. Um, and then I went to university and I was like, I went for art history. I was like, I'm going to be an art professor. This is like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and uh, yeah, I just spent most of my time writing pop songs <laughs> instead of essays. And and I decided that, you know, I was like 20, 21 at the time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get on a plane, go to LA and, and figure something out. <laughs> well, I could definitely see how where you were in university versus now, that's definitely a huge change. So yeah. we can definitely appreciate that. <laughs> so Jackie, I would love to talk about that track. Um, that's your newest one. I'm curious, were you inspired by her to write about it first or did you first have the idea and then decide that like, you were kind of gonna go the direction of talking about her and writing about her? Kind of both. I mean, like I, um, I actually found out, like, I learned a lot about Jackie Onassis uh, in art school because there's this one artist that painted a bunch of kind of, like, socialite, um, like, paintings of, like, significant spaces. Um, so I definitely, like, knew a, a good amount about her. Um, but honestly, it was it was mostly just any, any socialite, fashionable woman of the 60s would have done, but... Um, yeah, I think she's definitely very iconic, especially with her fashion choices and and yeah, I feel like she's just like an all around like cool but fashionable but smart but like political woman. Um which uh yeah, definitely inspired the song to an extent. Um I think I took it a little bit of a different direction. Um uh, but yeah, no, I, I didn't have an intention of writing a song about Jackie Onassis. Well, that's funny that you say that she's like cool, fashionable, but political, because that's kind of sort of what I feel like about the song. Like it's, it's cool, like depicting a lifestyle, but it is, there is definitely a social message behind it. Um, how important do you think it was for you to like uh, incorporate more of a social message in a song? Um, it was definitely very important, especially... I mean, I, there's there's parts of the song that are definitely reflective of my personal life, mostly the verses. Um, and then I kind of wrote this chorus that was like, we can go to dinner in Paris, like we can drive your car. And it was so, like, it's so dramatic and so extreme. And, and so I decided to like, that that kind of energy needs sort of like a, but let's not go to dinner in Paris and fly back because, you know, the world is dying and like let's let's not ignore all of our problems I know you feel like that but um which I feel like a lot of those songs are kind of missing like that it's definitely not like a new idea to like write a song about like wanting to run away but I feel like 
a lot of those songs that are very kind of like idealistic and they don't actually stop and go well no you can't do that because you work a full-time job so right right sort of like the consequences don't matter it's all about this but you're towing the line of like realistic (laughs) romanticized I love that so I know you like moved around a lot going back and forth you're in Toronto now um you're in Los Angeles would you call Toronto your home uh yeah 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 I spend I mean last year I spent a lot of time in LA even the beginning of this year I spent three months there um until I had to come back but um yeah Toronto's definitely I mean I'm the most I know the most about where I am when I'm in Toronto and and the people and and the restaurants and the culture and stuff like that so yeah Toronto is definitely I would say my like home base gotcha what kind of impact do you think that like that sort of moving around has had on your creative process I think a lot, especially, I mean, I was born in the UK, and then I moved from the UK to Toronto, so I think it's definitely, like, some things that I, like, sing about are, like, very, like, the sentences are not, and I mean, I do it in my everyday life, like, things that I say are very British, Um, and so there would be very British phrases coming out of, like, you know, a North American accent who, like, grew up in also, like, Toronto and and kind of has that influence. So yeah, it's definitely definitely a bit all over the place. And then the time that I spend in LA is, I mean, I love LA, but it definitely has this like bubble world to it. Um, so being able to like come back here and kind of like analyze that when you've returned and you're like, I can't believe that happened. Like <laughs> I just show up to this party and met this person and whatever, whatever. Um, And I think that definitely finds its way into the music a little bit. Yeah, I love that, being able to, like, be in one place and then come back to the other place to, like, analyze what you did in that one place. I love that. That's super cool. So I also wanted to ask you about your debut single, My Friends Online, Um, because as I understand, it wasn't necessarily written about the pandemic, but it kind of inadvertently became a lot of people's lockdown anthems, including myself. (laughs) So were you already planning to release the track before COVID was a thing? Or like, did you feel like it was the best time? Like, how did that line up so perfectly? <laughs> um, honestly, yeah, I wrote it the no- like last November. Um, and it was just about like me being in LA and spending a lot of time on my phone and having all my friends and family be in like a different spot, whether it's the UK or, or in Toronto. Like, I feel like I was constantly just like on my phone talking to my friends um but not necessarily like engaging in like the world that was around me when I was there um and yeah we I mean we set to release it in like we picked the date in November I think end of November like right when I wrote it um and yeah it was like a week before we were set to release and I was like can we release this because I feel like the messaging is Cause it's not, it's not just like, it's not just like, oh, my friends online. It's like, I want my friends online to be around me when I die. Um, and I was like, this, this is too close to home. There's no, I could not have predicted this. Wow. That's amazing. That's like, I don't know, maybe that it was just meant to be like that, (laughs) but I think it worked out well. It's, it's very nice that people kind of took their own context and it's kind of become like a whole other um, meaning, which is really cool, and definitely could not have seen that coming. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing about music, though, is, like, you put it out in the world, and then it can kind of do whatever in the minds of people, so I think that that's pretty special, that it, it came out at a time when people could really apply it to their normal life, um, and especially when it's such a shared experience. That's super cool. Yeah. So, your debut EP, You and Me But Mostly Me, was out in July, which was also really exciting. Do you, I know it's like an impossible question, but do you have a favorite track off of it? Um, probably either Sunday or Waste of Emotion, I think. And they were like the two, I mean, I wrote Sunday like, like two or three years before I dropped the EP. Um, but we didn't like really work on the production until like a couple months before. And same with Waste of Emotion I wrote actually in January um and then we we worked on the production like a month or so before we actually dropped the EP um 
so I feel like they're still kind of like new and fresh in a way um Mm -hmm. but yeah I I really I think I like those the most right now but it changes you know sometimes sometimes it's those sometimes it's all into or haircut depends depends on the mood awesome I love it I love haircut if it matters at all (laughs) I love that one (laughs) so your moniker Elio was inspired by call me by your name um, which I love amazing Um, were there any other kind of pieces of art or pop culture that have also influenced you in your music um oh my god is this the first thing that popped into my mind was Gilmore Girls that is so (laughs) that is so pathetic um yeah I mean I'm constantly I'm one of those people that like walks out of the movie theater and like thinks their life is transformed and like they're the main character and like you know you're so invested and you feel all the emotion like I'm so sucked into that kind of stuff um So, yeah, I definitely, I could watch any movie and probably write a song about it because I just get so emotionally attached. Yeah, well, that's what I feel like good songwriting, getting to, like, feel the story. So, I Mm -hmm. love that. (laughs) Gilmore Girls. I love that that was, it was Call Me By Your Name and then Gilmore Girls. And then get two very very different things. Those are, like, Uh, the two takeaways right there. (laughs) That's funny. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, before we wrap it up, do you have anything you like you have coming up that you'd like to share with everyone listening? Um, yeah, I think we're going to release an EP, another one, at some point within the next coming months. I don't have a date for it, but um, yeah, singles and stuff will be coming, which is really exciting. Um, and yeah keep an eye out for that hopefully music videos but who knows in the state of this world today i'm trying hopefully awesome well that's a lot to look forward to so thank you so much for coming in and sitting down with me thank you